All right, I think we're, we're good, so thank you. Um, all right, I'm Alan Silberberg. Um, we're going to start up Gov20LA again. Uh, sorry for the delay. Um, if you're following us on the internet, the, the hashtag on Twitter is Gov20LA, G-O-V-2-0-L-A. And it is my pleasure to introduce Andrew Nevis. Andrew, you are a veteran uh, Gov2.LA speaker. You spoke here last year. Um, I, I am not allowed to say which agency uh, Andrew works for. Suffice to say, it is a large uh, domestic Homeland Security Police Agency. <laughs> Thanks, Alan. <laughs> yeah, it's actually, it's not because it's top secret, it's uh, ethics rules. You can Google my name, I'm sure you can figure out who I work for and stuff like that. Um, uh, I'm really glad to be back here um, at Gov 2.0 2013. Um, you know, I've been in public service since 1996. Uh, Ten years I was CIO of a city and the last seven at my current agency. Um, you know, in that time, social media and just, you know, open government and big data and small data and really data has really come on board. And I've really enjoyed that transformation and change. Um, you know, so when I tell my coworkers, you know, hey, I'm going to speak at Gov 2.0 LA, they said, well, you know, what are you going to talk about? And I said, well, I talk about you know, social media or talk about data and listen to other speakers about this and that. And they're like, well, that's what we're doing here. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> exactly. Um, they just have no idea it's, it's 2.0. They don't know any of the terms, technologies. They're just doing the work, which I find really great about public servants for the most part. Um, you know, they, they don't know what it is, but they, they are doing it. Um, so at work and in normal life, I think about information a lot. And I think about how it's coming into us, uh, what we're broadcasting back out, um, how we can use it, uh, who needs it, how we can secure it sometimes. Um, but what I found out in the past year since my last talk is really how social media doesn't just connect agencies with people uh, to broadcast this information. A lot of that is still just being done on a broadcast level. But it really connects people to people. Um, as Alan said a few uh, minutes ago, um, you know, when I go through events, I'm messaging him. I'm messaging Adriel sometimes. I'm messaging, you know, people I've met online um, just as if they were next door, although hopefully they have power, <laughs> even if I don't. <coughs> um, you know, these are real connections and real communities, and that's really what the most important part about social media, even coming from a, uh, a government to uh, citizen or company to citizen uh, perspective. And I think Tom was really good at, at pointing that out. It's much more important to have that um, relationship rather than just, oh, I'm going to broadcast that to you. So, uh, so okay, my words are my own. I'm here by myself. I'm not here from my agency. Nothing to do with my agency. I am Andrew Nevis. My uh, personal Twitter account is at Andrew Nevis. Um, and you can go aneb.us. My name sort of worked out that way. Um, you'll actually find my LinkedIn there. Feel free to connect. Um, I find that conversation usually starts here. I've met a lot of you and connected with you over the year um, and stayed in touch. Uh, so I'd really appreciate it if you do connect with me. Uh, tweet me anytime, uh, email, of course, et cetera. So social media in 2013, um, it really has, uh, well, I sh sorry. I'm going to go through three separate areas. First, social media 2013, um, sort of the, some of the sites that are being used. Tom alluded to a few, so I'll, I'll speed up my presentation a little bit. Uh, next, a broad discussion on what should be done during massive events. Um, and third, my real life experiences from my point of view, not as working at an agency, but really being in a event and having to you know, work with other agencies. To be honest, um, I'm not sure I'll get through the presentation without getting choked up a little bit. It was a very emotional year, oh geez. <laughs> a very emotional year for me. I am a normal person, and you know, uh, so uh, I'm from New Jersey. So when Hurricane Sandy devastated our shore, and when I started seeing pictures of places I had been to as a kid, it really struck home for me. Um, so hopefully, I'll make through most of the uh, presentation. Um, 
get to this because Tom went over that. Okay. Social media and public safety is a huge topic. I'm going to touch upon a little bit of it. There's a lot more. So again, feel free to reach out to me and, and we can continue this conversation uh, later. Um, so more and more agencies are joining social media, which is a great thing. Um, and they're joining different social media. Uh, Facebook and Twitter are still the, the you know, bears in the room. Everyone's on there because that's where the people are. Uh, but there are some interesting other social media experiences out there that agencies are joining. Uh, so Facebook, again, monster in the room. Uh, this is Philadelphia PD. Philadelphia PD is actually a, a really great guy. Um, and he runs their social networking uh, with the blessing of the, the police department. Um, but he got up to 53,000 likes. So according to the IACP, this is the most popular municipal law enforcement agency on Facebook in the category of over a thousand law enforcement officers, et cetera. Um, but for them to run this and to run uh, BOLOs, which is basically who we're looking out for, get feedback from the community about uh, events and, and do that is, is really powerful from a very small unit, even for such a large uh, police department. Um, YouTube is also very popular. Here's a, uh, a, a video done by New Jersey Transit. It's actually about rail uh, safety. So for grade crossings, uh, they did a really good piece about the dangers associated with that. Uh, YouTube is obviously the, the monster in the room for video. Uh, Instagram really came up this past year. Uh, last year, really, I was talking a lot about Flickr. Uh, Instagram now, part of Facebook, um, is a great place to show off your agency. And it's similar to the uh, use of Pinterest, where you're showing really your human face. Uh, this is the Baltimore Police Department, uh, which is an agency that was established in 1853. And what's really neat about it is that some of the filters really look like you know it's taking you back, and it really makes me say, "Wow, this is a, a, a an agency with a lot of tradition." This is actually their 2012-2000, uh, oh sorry, second academy graduation. Uh, but yeah, it looks like you know it's so long ago. Uh, Vine, and I'm, I'm glad I got a different uh, example. Um, it's kind of interesting. I'm not really sure if Vine's going to be as big as, as maybe Tom does. I think it's really interesting for um, showing what your agency's doing, doing a lot of PR work. Um, this is a, an agency, Mountain View Police Department, here in California that's using it to show how, you know, hey, pedestrian crosswalk has the right of way. The video, actually, the, the car speeds right by him, totally ignoring the pedestrian, and they give the guy a ticket. So it's really helpful in you know, reaching out to the public and sort of shaking them into awareness through social media, which is helpful. But the reality in 2013 is that social media is becoming the normal course of business for agencies, um, you know, well-prepared agencies anyway. Um, shortly after the IEDs uh, detonated um, during the marathon, um, there was a call um, on the radio, and again, I, I, I didn't track down which commander it was, but you know, we're going to get the victims out. Then we're going to get conduct a sweep. We're going to get EOD. We're going to get all these people to come in through the restaurants and the bars. I need to get someone up there on social media and let people know what we're going to do. And to activate that takes a while, but just in the mindset of someone in the field saying, we need to get out to people and tell them what we're doing is essential. And in any large event, that's going to be the normal course of business, and it's becoming more and more normal. So you know, how do we use social media during an event? Uh, yes? Um, it is to a degree, but, you know, coordinating those megaphones and taking those people off from actually getting the job done to saying, get out of here, versus people are already paying attention. I mean, an explosion goes off. You're paying attention to Twitter yeah, and Facebook. Uh, yeah, uh, social media really, I mean, baseline is force multiplier. Um, and not only tells you, but it tells the people looking at home what's going on, who then call their friend uh, and say, hey, what's going on? Are you by the finish line? Are you this? You know, I actually jumped on um, Foursquare to see my friend Eric Anderson. I, I wanted to see, was he anywhere near there? Um, and he was at home, so, you know, it, it took a little edge off from me. Um, you know, so it really is in, in that way, you know, helpful in addition to the, the megaphone. Um, so before, during, and after an event, public safety or uh, government agencies are going to use it for multiple purposes. Uh, the first, which I really saw a lot of in Hurricane Sandy, 
was in preparation. Um, where this is useful is major agencies like the MTA um, will say, hey, you know what, we're, we're taking this seriously. We're preparing. This is what we're doing. You should take this seriously as well. You know, closing off stations, things like that. Um, we can use it for offering caution and advice. Stay in your homes. Don't go out. That's a, a very important message to get out very quickly. Critical, um, you know, from Sandy was telling me what was open and closed. You know, where could I go? Could I get gas? You know, it, an extended event. Those were very important messages to get out. Casualties and damage. Um, you know, sort of part of the nature of humans. We want to know, you know, have people been hurt? Where is their uh, damage done? How big is the damage? Uh, social media is a good way to get that out there, and it's both through the public safety agencies sharing it, you know, uh, stations flooded, things like that, and it's also through one-on-one, -on -one, you know, I, I share a picture of, you know, my house if it's flooded, um, things like that. The next one is asking for donations and offers. Are, are those still circulating? No, but I, oh. not yet. Okay. I got a next. I've used one of these before. Um, <laughs> donations, there's one coming up. <laughs> donations and offers. So in any kind of event, you're going to have, oh, give money to these kids, th uh, this need, stuff like this. And there's actually a large coordination effort. And, you, know, you have your Red Cross, stuff like that. Uh, but this year, I actually saw Occupy Sandy, which was kind of amazing because, um, so last year I talked about platforms like Ushahidi where you can map need versus resource and p people tie that together. Occupy Sandy did the same thing. They said, you know, hey, we, we need uh, uh, drivers to pick up 600 hot meals and deliver them. Here's where we're going to deliver them. And people called in and got this sort of work done. So here's something that the normal government agencies were busy doing work. We had additional resources available, and someone was coordinating it through Twitter, um, which was, was kind of an amazing thing. Um, you also get, if I go back to normal, um, Celebrity reactions are, of course, broadcast. Uh, that can be good and bad. Sometimes celebrities include government officials, like presidents or things like that, speaking on it, Mayor Bloomberg, uh, stuff like that. Uh, information sources, pointing to you know news broadcasts that might be relevant. Um, parody accounts, um, you know, comedians go into full swing. And honestly, after a couple of days of being in the event myself, I actually found a lot of relief in in some of that comedy, so it, it was very helpful. Um, fakes, scams, and misinformation is a whole category, which I'll, I'll bring up a few later. Um, and dealing with that is a whole nother uh, thread, which is probably a good discussion for next year. Um, as Tom spoke about, having established voices already present in social media is crucial to being taken seriously. If you already have these voices on Facebook and Twitter and Vine, when you have an event and then you can speak out, people already know this is the source, this is the authority, this is the guy who's going to give me the correct information. Uh, so doing that is, is very helpful, and it certainly helped my personal experience because I already was following you know, a number of them. Um, so where I'd like to go now is I'd like to walk you through my personal experience using social media during Hurricane Sandy or Superstorm Sandy. So the first report that comes in um, October 28th uh, was showing the path of the storm. This, you know, it's about where it, where it was going. But this dot right here, this unaltered photo, is my house. So that's when it started to get a little real for me, because I'm like, oh, it's not just coming to Jersey, it's coming to my house. That's about where I live. Stop by any time, Adriel. Um, you know, it's getting a little intense, but it was a little early forecast, so things changed, not a big deal. Um, you know, I started to get on social media, I started to follow accounts, stuff like that, um, and I was able to laugh a little bit. Here's the fake mayor of New York. <laughs> oh, it, it, he's hilarious. He'll do the, he'll do the Spanish-esque <laughs> equivalent of whatever the mayor's saying. <laughs> Evacuate Ozome. Oh, yeah. If you don't follow it now, please, please go ahead. It, 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 it will make you laugh about anything he puts out, which is really wonderful. Um, so as I experienced during Hurricane Irene, Irene previously, the MTA actually puts out some amazing preparation photos. Here's one of them closing Lenox Terminal, and they're showing you, you know, 
we're shutting down rail. And shutting down rail in New York City is pretty intense. That's how people get anywhere. So for them to put these messages out and these pictures out on, on this was on Flickr, and I have the address, it'll, it'll be on my presentation online, um, was pretty amazing. Um, you know, now, obviously, any local agency can do this. Hey, we're doing prep, we're putting sandbags up, we're doing um, these things. Now, it does help if you have iconic photography. Here's Grand Central Station empty. This uh, uh, photo alone has over 78,500 views. If you've ever been to Grand Central, it is never like this. So in this phase, I really start to get a little nervous because I'm like, oh, this is, this is getting pretty intense. You know, work's still going, everything's still good. You know, um, but you know, I start to get ready. So I load up my uh, smartphone with everything I need, flashlight app, which downloaded in advance, very helpful. Um, the Red Cross has a hurricane app. Uh, it can help you find resources and let people know that you're safe. Um, the USDA has a food safety app, um, and you can use their website um, to get information about you know, food safety. For me, honestly, after 72 hours, throw everything out. So it didn't really help. Um, but askkaren.gov is a great resource they offer. Um, and then I saved for FEMA, which is 43362 to my cell phone. If you're in an incident, you can text that number um, after it, text shelter in your zip code, and it'll give you help directly from FEMA. Which, so that's pretty baseline. You don't even need a smartphone for that. Um, and then I started following more accounts, Breaking Storm, things like this. My local power company, um, they're always helpful in, in an event. Um, you know, normally, I don't really follow these accounts because you know, I don't really mind when the next building cycle is up. I know it's going to get charged. But in preparation, that, that's really where I went. Um, so through the night, I was up. I'm up late night anyway. Um, but that's when I started to get hit with really a lot of fake posts. And even though I wasn't working, to me, that really hit hard because I don't like people getting duped into these ridiculous things. Um, so here's one I really took offense to. This is actually a real photo posted to Facebook of the old guard. The old guard is the guard, the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Um, this is really what happened that day, October 29th. The problem is it had been preceded by this photo of them still guarding that day. It's actually not too big a deal. I mean, they're still guarding, but this was taken in September. But for me, I was tweeting everybody back I could find who was tweeting this saying, oh, look, they're still guarding. Is that it's not real. Why are you representing a falsehood? Um, you know, this, this was a great one, uh, Photoshop. Uh, totally fake. Uh, looks very dramatic, though. Um, that was on somebody who was Facebook wrong. Oh, boy. I, I, all officers were emailing me, and I'm like, yeah, you know, you can see that vantage point a little further away from where you are. You, you know, <laughs> look outside. Uh, this one I actually liked. It's uh, flooded McDonald's, you know, pretty cool, right? It's actually uh, an art exhibit. <laughs> so, um, you know, just people caught on to it and, and, and flew with it. Uh, so I was emailing people back and, and messaging them and saying, you know, this is false, this is false, this is true. This is uh, kind of driving myself a little crazy then. And the other half of the time I was watching uh, webcams from all around the coast because uh, they put them online for tourist information. Um, and then we got the updated path. Okay, great. No longer coming up to my house, right? I'm gonna be okay. Except my, my in-laws are down here. <laughs> so that, that really uh, hit home and I stayed up the rest of the night doing a little crazy. Um, then we lost power. And that's when the standard rules apply. I had always charged my cell phone. I had my, my laptop charged so I could deal with that. I had all the power connectors in the world to use my car, stuff like that. And then my neighbors had to knock on my door because they didn't do any of those things. Um, but we did pretty well. But that's actually when it got a little interesting. Uh, you know, I was using Facebook, Twitter, to, I'm okay, I'm this, I'm that. Uh, um, I think, uh, you know, the, the thing I didn't expect was people from all around the world who I had spoken with were reaching to me, asking me how I was doing. I'm like, oh, I'm cool, I just got no power. You know, the storm's not really hitting me yet. Uh, <laughs> then they go to the 
my PSENG, that's our power company, and I, I report, and I want to get power back within, you know, a couple weeks, no problem. It's just an estimate, so they don't tell you that. Uh, but their website is actually particularly bad because they don't have no mobile version. So I needed a portion of my bill statement to prove I was me. I just wanted to report that I was out. I didn't, you know, really want expect any answer then. Uh, the only one worse than this was Verizon, who demanded I download an app that couldn't then service me anyway. <laughs> so when you're on a cell phone, you don't want to make too many calls, and you know you're out. You you don't want to download an app, especially when it's not going to help you. I had some choice words for them. Um, but then I started monitoring more, still on my mobile, living off my mobile for a week, which is, which is amazing. You should really try to do it, because even when I get home, I don't open my laptop anymore. I, I'm, I'm still mobile-based, which is pretty great. Uh, there are some websites that are all messed up, but. Um, I found two really useful hashtags, and these will pop up almost organically uh, afterwards. The two that were really helpful for most people, NJGas and NJOpen. Well, so what's open? Um, I actually found a lot more through uh, Foursquare myself. People were checking in. I know no place is open. Uh, New Jersey Gas, well, no power. Can't pump gas. Um, so those are two helpful to, to tell people wh what was good and what was bad. Um, well, not bad, but not open. Uh, more interesting was actually trying to get there. Because once you've identified a place that opened, you, know, you drive there, right? Well, it's a new place. You bring it up on Google Maps. That's great. But your street lights are out. And you can't make left turns because you can't cross four-lane roads without streetlights. So it's trying to use geodata that's been totally compromised without an app that fits it. Um, I have a few good underpass overpasses that I've, I've used to get around traffic, so I did okay. But a lot of people were just stuck. They could not get around. And our you know, uh, uh, systems don't really it adapt enough. It seems like a post-apocalyptic filter. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, so most public safety CAD vendors do that, mainly for road closings, uh, things like that. And actually, trucks have specialized units for, you know, you can't go under this bridge because it's too short for you. Um, but really, what that doesn't get filtered down to, you know, Google Maps, uh, or especially your, you know, your navigator, your TomTom, -tom, especially if it's not getting updates, you know, how can I get there? Um, you know, it, it really was pretty much a challenge. So at this point, I'm sorry to interrupt, but at this point, hmm? were you, uh, somebody turned around and got some extra for you, or you still would make some guess like, you know, an emergency would be, or, or? So at my house, I had uh, a little less than 3G on my cell phone. Uh, no Wi-Fi, uh, you know, landlines were just out. My central office was underwater. That's what it ended up being. Um, and no power. So I, I was able to do pretty well because, you know, Twitter really, you know, it's a lot of text. It's not really that, that heavy lift. The heavy lifts were when any website you visit wants you to download an app, which is ridiculous because to interact with my power company, and they, they were actually decent, so I shouldn't knock them except they had a non-mobile version. Um, but, you know, to deal with these uh, service utilities or to deal with government, to have to download an app, especially report an outage, was terrible. Verizon actually wanted me to go to my router. and I'm like, I can't even get a signal by my router. I'm just reporting it's out. Get back to me in a week when it's on. I don't care. I just want you to know it's down. Um, you know, so any of the agencies here, certainly, give your webmaster an eye touch and make him use the site that way. Because if he can't, it needs to be redesigned. Because uh, during a, a major event, it's just, it, it's not happening. You know, I, I didn't have the signal strength. Um, you know, so my in-laws actually did get a pretty good, you know, direct hit. Uh, but it hadn't done any damage in their community. They still had power and everything else. So I abandoned my house, took my family down there. Um, you know, getting through the gas station and stuff like that, um, finding things that were open um, was a challenge, but I was able to snake all the way down there. And then I got the robocall from work that we were going back to work. <laughs> so I had to drive back up north, which is pretty OK. Um, but really, how I got through that whole experience was crowdsourced data. Um, I used a, a, a gas crowdsourcing app to find out where gas stations were open. I used Foursquare to find restaurants. And actually, some interesting uh, uh, data on Foursquare. This is the activity um, pre-Sandy check-ins. You know, here's lower Manhattan. That's post-Sandy check-ins. 
um, it will really tell you where is open accessible. And you know, people just checking into you know, their house anyway because they have power, or they you know just checking in. But this is the section that was blacked out. There's actually a really great time lapse of this, um, the check-ins as they get lower and lower. Um, so speaking of Foursquare, I check in it everywhere. I have uh, sort of an addiction to it. Um, you know, but once I got far enough that there were actually places that open, uh, this was my first check-in. Go oh, sure. I'll get you, uh, uh, it's a uh, Foursquare's blog, has this and a really great time lapse of, of the event. Uh, first place I checked in was actually Whole Foods. They were open, they had a generator, I think. Um, and, you know, the barista was Dr. Frankenstorm. Uh, got a good laugh out of that. Uh, again, got my family all the way down, safe, returned home, and then I... <laughs> that was the hashtag before it became a real event, <laughs> was Frankenstorm. Um, so going back north, you know, I, home was cold, had no power, um, really didn't want to return there. So I, I start, just started driving north, um, looking for places to eat and hopefully friends that I can crash at. Now I'm allergic to every pet on the <laughs> planet, so it made an additional challenge for me. Finally did find a place, but um, this is the first time I cried. I, I was at a burger joint that had power and service, and out front were, were trucks from all the way from... Michigan, I tweeted this photo and I, I thanked Detroit for sending help to us. And, and for me, that's when I kind of lost it. Um, but you know, it really shows how, as a community, both with social media and in the real world, we're very tightly connected and how powerful it is. Uh, so the next day, I drove back home because although I found a place to crash and I got to work, um, needed to change of clothes, stuff like that. Uh, about two minutes before I got home, I got a text from my wife. Hey, you know, neighbor said power's back on. I'm like, this is amazing. Um, I can finally get back home, uh, get things back to normal. So I got in, um, called my wife, everything's okay. The next message I sent out was to um, a friend uh, who I'd only met once in person. Um, he had just moved to Jersey City. Um, and I know he had no power. So right away, I reached out to him. I said, hey, are you and your wife OK? Um, I'll come pick you up, because he relies on public transportation, so no car. He was OK, but that's really what I knew. You know, Social media isn't this vague, you know, other, not real life thing. Um, this is real life. You know, my friendships with uh, him and his wife, with Adriel, who I speak to mostly online, uh, Alan, you know, our real relationships and social media for me became far, far more important during this event um, that I had talked about last year about how governments and agencies need to broadcast information and be there to listen. Uh, this really was, we are all in this together. So uh, some notes, uh, during Sandy, East Coast internet usage increased 114% the first day of the storm. Uh, a lot of this was people tweeting, hey, I'm getting ready, I'm buying beer, I'm doing all these ridiculous things. Um, but a lot of it was, you know, really getting real. Um, there were 1.1 million people mentioning the word hurricane on Twitter in a 21-hour period for the storm. Sandy, in 2012, was the number two most talked about item on Facebook. Coming so late in the year, that's really amazing. Um, and... You know, for the first time, a photo sharing site took front line. This was Instagram. There was um, 10 storm-related pictures per second posted on Instagram during this period. It's an intense amount of data uploaded about what's going on, and then agencies having to, to figure out how to respond to that. So my final thoughts. I think I, I blew through this one uh, uh, pretty quick last year. Um, so I really don't have any final thoughts. Government 2.0 LA for me um, is the place I get to connect with people from all around and to figure out the next steps, what we're doing uh, right, what we're doing wrong, and how things are impacting us all. Um, certainly uh, from my thoughts last year to this year, I've just 
uh, resolved that that's even more important today uh, than ever before. And that's where agencies and us as people are going. Um, so just as a quick reminder, I'm speaking for myself, not my employer. Uh, my words are my own, my tweets are my own. You can find me on Twitter, at Andrew Nebus, and aneb.us is my uh, uh, LinkedIn. If you're here, you know, certainly grab me, I can share my phone number, and feel free to text me anytime. I, I do uh, uh, stay up quite late. You know, my experience with social media uh, and the people I've connected was really what got me through uh, Sandy and dealing with that. And our area is still recovering. Um, but the outpouring of connections from all around the world really was important. So the next time there's an event um, of this scale and you have people in the area, reach out to them over those uh, social networks because it really does make a big difference. Thank you.